Hey gang, back with another video for you today. And guess what? I've got Joe back here with me. I have returned. Hello. So you know what I've thought? Uh, since Joe really likes fragrances, I thought we can basically have him over and we can profile different brands, which is what we're doing today. We're profiling the brand Milano Fragranza, which is a sister house to Mask Milano. So we're going to go over every single fragrance like we did with Sospiro a few weeks or month ago. And then at the end of the video, we're going to talk about our favorites. So we've got a ranked list. So find out all about Milano Fragranza today, coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian and this is Joe. Hello, hello, y'all. So are you familiar with Milano Fragranza? I've sampled a few of their fragrances in the past. I've sampled about seven of them. Um, we have about 10 here for demo right now. So I was able to get my nose on the other three and I like what they have. I'm not too familiar with Mask Milano, which I know is their sister company, but yeah. I enjoy their stuff. Yeah, Mask Milano has been around much longer than uh, Milano Fragranza. They're both, uh, you know, brands uh, that are based out of Milan, whereas this brand, Milano Fragranza, is pro, you know, uh, based on fragrances uh, inspired by neighborhoods in Milan. Uh, and uh, Mass Milano is a bit different. So these are fairly inexpensive. They're $140 for 100 ml Eau de Parfum concentration, and they are currently sold at Max Aroma, and I have it linked in the info box. So basically what we're going to do today is go over each of the fragrances alphabetically, and at the end of the video, I'm going to let you know what my favorites are, and uh, Joe is going to let us know what his favorites are. We'll see if there's any overlap. Like mm -hmm. last video we did for Sospiro, there was a few overlaps. We in agreed our, a lot on that. We yeah. did, and uh, our favorite fragrance was... Uh, the same fragrance. So Dolce let's Le, Dolce Melodia. Dolce Melodia Lovely from one. Sospiro. Yeah, yeah, really love that one. So let's see how it is today. And if you haven't caught that Sospiro video, I have it linked in the info box. But we're going to go ahead and start with Basilica. Basilica. So we're doing it in alphabetical order. This is a B, Basilica. So as soon as you hear the name, you're thinking it's going to smell like church, incense, things like that. Is that what we get with this one? I get, I get some smokiness. I mean, it is at the end of the day, it's a very resinous, smoky fragrance. Um, they also have this, they call it a warm milk accord, which I pick up on a little bit. Sebastian doesn't pick up on it too much from what he was telling me. The creaminess is slightly there and it takes away some of the harshness that you might get from an incense sometimes. Um, I personally, I really do enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. So it's a 2021 launch. It's created by Violaine Colas. I'm just giving you some details about it. And as I was saying earlier, $140 Eau de Parfum concentration for all these fragrances. It's 100 ml. So Basilica features uh, notes of thyme, rosemary, incense resinoid, labdanum, hyper essence, warm milk accord, cedarwood, cypriol, sentimental, which is a woody note. So the reason I don't like this one is when I was wearing it, it was all very cold also very aromatic and very dry. I wish I got that creamy warm milk accord. I don't get it whatsoever. I like the thyme, I like the rosemary in this, but it really does start smelling like church to me. So I wasn't appreciating this one. Hey, we all have our own Do you opinions. like it? I am a really big fan of Basilica. <laughs> Do you normally like churchy, incensey fragrances? I am a fan of heavier incenses and for whatever reason i pick up on more of a, a warming sensation from this one whereas you get more of a cold sensation yeah it was all cold and i wanted something like vana gloria or baby cat which yeah. is contrasted with vanilla so it's warm things like that this yeah. is all very cold on me so i didn't really appreciate this one as much it might be the ambery touch from the labdanum that might be what i'm getting Oh, possibly. Labdanum usually typically is uh, warm because yeah. it's a uh, you know an amber accord. Yeah. Anyway, so next fragrance we're talking about is Brera, a neighborhood I've hung out in Milan. So Brera is a beautiful, big amber floral fragrance. Once again, it's created by Violaine Cola. I think that's how you say her name. Mm -hmm. Rose Absolute, Rose Super Essence, Saffron, Geranium Bourbon, Labdanum, Patchouli, Bergamot, Chili Pepper, Vanilla, and Jasmine. It's an amber floral fragrance. It's definitely lots of rose. And I do pick it up as soon as you spray it. Yeah. Out of the entire collection, I feel like this is one of the biggest uh, ones. It's really full. It's intense. And I like what I'm smelling. Mm -hmm. This is actually really, really delicious. It's really heavy and intense. It does remind me of other fragrances that I've smelled that are kind of similar. It's a kind of a Middle Eastern-esque rose. 
and uh, saffron. Mm -hmm. Saffron is prominent here. So you get the saffron along with the rose and some leathery touches as well. So what do you like about this? I really like the like? I, I enjoy it, yes. I enjoy the rose. Um, I think given the fact that it's rose absolute and rose super essence, I'm not too sure what super essence actually is. I guess it's maybe a distillation or yeah. extraction process. It's very rosy. It's extremely rosy. And it's a lovely rose. It's really good. It's a very voluptuous rose. It's no, I wouldn't say necessarily overly jammy, but it's quite nice. Um, the saffron is probably offering some of those leathery touches that we're picking up on. And uh, for me, this is very, very jammy. I can totally taste the rose jam, but it's thick. It's not very syrupy. Yeah. And I'm also getting a very powdery effect here as well. I think it's lovely. This is beautiful. Slight, just a little bit of spiciness from the chili pepper and the vanilla adds just the perfect amount of sweetness. Yeah. This is actually really, really beautiful. I would say we're going from a disappointing fragrance to a really wonderful big he thinks basilica is disappointing i personally love it <laughs> you can't love everything you can't love everything so the next fragrance we're talking about is cortile this is it right here this is created by michelle mulhausen and the notes are jasmine sambac with tuberose ylang ylang suede violet leaves coffee Osmanthus, bergamot, sandalwood, cinnamon, amber, accord. This to me is a beautiful white floral bouquet. They've, they've combined all kinds of different uh, flowers in there along with that tropical ylang ylang flower, floral note. It's beautiful. It's really pretty. Very pretty. I think it is a, a great interpretation on like what Sebastian said to be a white floral bouquet. I pick up on a lot of the tuberose in it. I get a lot of that jasmine as well. It's not a dirty jasmine. It's a very clean jasmine. And all together they all pair together very nicely and the suede offers a very nice slight buttery leatheriness to it yeah the whole fragrance is very creamy because all the flowers the white flowers mm -hmm. creates this creamy accord and with the suede's butteriness it's just a really smooth fragrance you know i've actually seen this perfumer's name come up and i do enjoy another floral fragrance of hers and i believe the other one i'm drawing a blank with the name it's a tobacco floral fragrance so i feel like she knows floral notes very well and she's done a great job here so cortile is the third fragrance we're talking about today all right we're talking about derby next this is derby right here so i don't know what derby has anything to do with milan but uh, i enjoy this fragrance i like its greenness but the only problem with this one is when i was testing it out it was very faint on me now this is created by dominique molhausen is she relate is it a she? i think it's a she is she related to michelle molhausen are they sisters? I don't know. But Derby features notes of galbanum along with Indian mimosa, violet leaves, vetiver, oak moss, sandalwood, lavender, yellow mandarin, tuber rose, ylang ylang, and patchouli. Instantly, I thought I was going to really enjoy it, and I do enjoy the smell. I just wish it was beefier. Mm -hmm. That's the only problem with this one. I agree. I was comparing it with a few other kind of green aromatic fragrances. This one was subdued on me. Uh, but others were a lot more beefier. But I love the smell. It's a lovely smell. You really pick up on the galbanum at the start, kind of that bitter green scent. It's not necessarily an offensive bitterness, but it's a very lovely just overall green smell. And then the vetiver and the oak moss as well adds to that. I believe I sprayed this one on my left hand. So after I sprayed Basilica on my right, I sprayed Derby on my left, and I'm already starting to... I don't think I'm going anosmic to it, but I'm definitely not smelling it as strong as I did when I first sprayed it on. So I yeah, agree. That's my only complaint with this one because I absolutely love galbanum and fragrances. And when we're talking about galbanum here, it's not smelling like Chanel number no. 19, which is an overdose of galbanum. This is a little more aromaticized, if that's a way to put it. It's mm -hmm. more blended to match other aromatic notes like the lavender here and things like that and the yeah. oak moss and things like that so i think this is a great fragrance i just wish it was a bit more of a screamer and i can really feel the fragrance when i'm wearing it yeah so the next fragrance we're talking about is diurno this one right here and this one when you f smell it instantly you'll think fougere mm -hmm. that's what it comes to mind fougere it's an aromatic fougere this is a fragrance created by Julie Massé. I think that's how you say her name. Mm -hmm. It's got lavender with geranium, Italian amaretto accord, sage, white musks, water notes, and cedar. So in comparison to Derby, this is a lot beefier. But uh, there's another green kind of aromatic fragrance. I feel like this is in the middle of the other one, which will come next or later on. 
But this one's stronger than Derby, but not as strong as the other one. But let's go ahead and smell this one again. Yeah. Do you, what do you think about this? I personally really enjoy this one. Um, I definitely get that Fougere barbershop-y aspect to it. I could pick up on some of the aromatics. The aromatics are definitely there, but the geranium also comes through quite a bit. The musks, I'm assuming, would come out more so in the dry down, which I have to get a little bit more familiar with mm -hmm. um, to actually understand. But I think it's lovely. But to me, the, the magic is in the amaretto accord because you, when you're smelling all the aromatics like the lavender and the geranium, under there, there's a bit of an almondy effect, which is kind of cool. It also adds a smoothness to it. And it's almost like an almondy shaving cream that you're yeah. spritzing on. Mm -hmm. So that's actually kind of magical for me. That's a, a great thing to do. Unfortunately, this didn't rank really high for me. We'll get to it. But I think it's a job well done by Julie Massé. So this is Dior No. Mm -hmm. A great one, I think, right? I think it's a really good one. Yeah, again, it didn't rank crazy high for me as well. But I think it's a, a very good fougere. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Yeah. All right, we're moving on to the next fragrance called Galleria. So this was a very interesting wear, and I discovered that I really, really, really love the dry down, but the, the, the top notes are a bit off-putting and very animalic. So this, I would consider this a leather or animalic fragrance or animalic leather fragrance, and we've got uh, another Dominique Mulhausen created fragrance. It's a leather accord with iris pallida, red fruits, violet leaves, coffee beans, davana, citrus notes, sandalwood, patchouli, amber, carrot seeds, bitter orange leaves. Very, very complex fragrance. It really wears complex, but if you can get through the top notes, it dries down heavenly. I really, really love it. Really love it. But the top notes, it's pretty animalic. It's a very rough leather. That intro is definitely something to take in. Again, if you like animalics, which I tend to be drawn towards it is quite animalic the leather is i'm not i'm not sure what kind of leather accord they're using but i'm assuming that if maybe they use the castorium they might have upped the castorium in it because it is quite animalic for sure the leather is definitely not a leather to mess with but i do pick up on some of the coffee as it dries down a little bit even on the even on the card i can pick up a little bit of the coffee and the fruits not necessarily getting too much of the fruits are you getting a lot of the fruits or is that more further into the dry down? I don't think I get fruits from this. Uh, I do get the idea of makeup mm -hmm. and leather purse. The idea of makeup smeared all over a leather purse. But this leather purse is not very refined. It's a very rough purse. <laughs> I can still smell the animal on this purse Yeah. really intensely. But it's got lots of iris. It's powdery. And it's got that violet leaf. So it's ozonic. Very animalic, but the dry down is so amazing. It's almost like a gourmand dry down. I don't know what it is about it. It's really delicious because a couple times I wore it, I was like, oh my God, I have to get through that top notes again. But when it's drying down, I just want to smell more of it over and over and over again. That's what I like about Galleria. I think it's, I think it's a good fragrance, personally. It is animalic. I've ranked it pretty high too, so stay tuned to find out. But Galleria is awesome. Yes. All right, we're moving on to La Prima, this one right here. So out of all the fragrances, I felt like this was a bit redundant because mm. uh, I really like Cortile, which is the, the, the white floral fragrance. This, on the other hand, is kind of like a white floral fragrance. It is a white floral fragrance, but there's, it also has fruity uh, notes as well. Uh, it's not necessarily having fruity notes. It has the osmanthus, which creates the kind of apricotty peachiness. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is Violaine Colas. It's jasmine, orange blossom. Osmanthus, Vanilla, Fur Accord, Musk, Cardamom, Davana, and Bergamot. It's what? playful. Yeah? It's quite playful. Yeah. Personally, I'm not the biggest advocate for playful fragrances. It's just not what I wear personally. But if you were in kind of a mindset where you wanted to wear something youthful and kind of fun and spunky, like, it's, it's a good fragrance for that. I mean... Again, for my personal taste, it's not what I like, but I think it's definitely good for a lot of people out there. It reminds me of a young girl's kind of a fragrance. It mm -hmm. just puts me into a the place of bubblegum. There's a bubblegumminess about it here. Yeah. And so immediately I think of a young girl popping her bubblegum with blowing <laughs> bubbles and things like that. Yeah, uh, It's a fun fragrance. I think exactly what Joe said. Uh, Do you get the fur cord? Faintly, uh, very faintly. Not, yeah. not, not much. Yeah. So next up, it's Naviglio, this one right here. So, you know, I really love this one. I don't know what it is about it because I do like 
fragrances that feature a soapiness? Well, let me tell you about the, who created it. It's Michelle Mulhausen once again. It's got n- notes of Marseille soap accord, Neroli, Petagran, Bergamot, Calabria, Vetiver Haiti, aquatic notes, white musks, lavender, and cedar. So it's definitely very soapy. And also the idea of orange blossom and things like that comes to mind. But for me, when I'm wearing it, just imagine you're lathering soap in the shower. So it's mixing with the water. Mm-hmm. That's how I get it. It's got a major aquatic touch. And it seems like you've run this soap under the water. And it's like kind of diluted a little bit. It still smells soapy. And it smells watery at the same time. That's exactly what I get with it. I, I really like this one. I think it's a really good almost skin scent. Kind of like what Sebastian was saying Watered down soap doesn't necessarily sound too appealing, I don't think, but if you could imagine that clean feeling you get after the shower Mm -hmm. where it's a mixture of your skin and the soap you're using and also those kind of like aquatic notes, it's that in a fragrance. And I think it's lovely, really good for warm weather. Uh Uh-huh. In my opinion, I think it would project very nicely in warm weather. Definitely. Yeah, I think think it's a good fragrance. Yeah. When you... Wear something like that in the humid weather, you'll get that instant clean feeling, even though it's all sweaty yeah. and kind of gross out there. Mm-hmm. They would cool you off, and then you've got this kind of subconscious clean feeling with it. It's very refreshing. Yeah. yeah. So this next fragrance is Panettone, this one right here. This is the one I featured in some videos recently and on the channel. You can go ahead and search. This is the only gourmand in the collection. This is created by Mathilde Bijou. I think that's how you say her name. Bitter orange, vanilla, ginger, rum, everlasting flower, immortel, mandarin, carrot seeds, davana, tagettes, vinyl, gaia call. This literally smells like panettone. Yeah. It's panettone come to life in perfume form. If you like gourmands, citrusy gourmands, this would do it for you. But there's also some spices, and it also has a holiday smell. Mm -hmm. Really, really smells like the holidays. And panettone, it's super delicious. This one surprised me when I first smelt it because there really isn't much on the market that is going to equate to this with scent profile wise. It's very unique and it has that dessert, just gourmand sweetness to it, but also a little bit of citrus because panettone has dried fruits within the actual bread is kind of like a cake bread. Yeah, it's a cake bread. And it's a it's a cakey fragrance. It smells kind of like... It, it smells like panettone. It's, be, it's, it's, it's very bready. <laughs> yeah. It's a bready It's lovely, though. Citrus. Definitely the, the idea of citruses comes to mind, and mm-hmm. you've got a nice meshing of that kind of bitter, bittersweet orange with the vanilla, the ginger, the booziness of the rum. You get the rum a little bit yeah. in there, yeah, for sure. It's, it's super delicious. I really like that one. I think it's very unique, and you guys got to get your nose on it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, this is Piazza Afari, this one right here. So this is the third or aromatic kind of green fragrance I was comparing against Derby, Diurno, and Piazza Affari. Piazza Affari lasted the longest in comparison to those, all, to the all three. And then Derby was the weakest out of them. But you know what? I really preferred the smell of Derby over all of them. Mm-hmm. But it, I'm, I, I'm ranking it low because of its very subtle qualities. This is created by Cecile Maton once again. This is featuring notes of lime, pink pepper, lavender, black currant, cardamom, vetiver, patchouli, cedarwood, and geranium. Uh, for me, this also has a dry down of a very intense aromatic notes fragrance, a bit like fougere, uh, but I don't know what it is. There's something like molecular under there. I feel like there's some ambroxan that pops through when it's drying down, mm-hmm. but I really like this one. I think it's lovely. It's uh, it's definitely the most citrusy out of the three fougeres. Um, you can definitely pick definitely. up on that lime. It definitely comes through. It's zesty. It's juicy. It's quite nice. A little bit of spiciness from the pink pepper, but nothing in your face, I wouldn't say. And the aromatic from the lavender is just, it's really nice. I think it's a very pretty one. Again, this one ranked somewhat mid as far as the, as far as the fougere, fougeres go in this collection. And I agree with Sebastian that Derby, scent-wise, best one, but it's, weak. The lo- it's the longevity. Yeah, it's a weak one. Yeah, that's its downfall. That's its downfall. Yeah. All right, now that we've gone over the entire Milano Fragranza collection, we are going to rank the fragrances. I've got my own ranking, and Joe's got his own ranking. And my number 10, I'm going with Basilica. So Basilica is uh, one of those fragrances that I just did not get into. It's Mm -hmm. got a very cold feel to me. 
uh, the notes come off very cold and I wanted the warm milk accord to be a lot warmer to have a nice contrast to get all, against all the cold notes because we've got all the incense resinous notes and we also have the aromatics like the basil and then rosemary it, yeah rosemary yeah so it just created a very cold fragrance so I'm ranking it at the bottom okay for me, my number 10 was La Prima, and as I mentioned before, I think it was a little too playful and little girly for me. It's a really good fragrance, and if you are into that scent profile, go for it. You will be pleased by it, but for me, it's just not something that I would typically wear. Yeah. yeah so my number yeah. nine is La Prima mm -hmm. as well. He did number 10, and I did number nine. La Prima was very girly for me, and I think it's that whole white floral uh, notes that created a bubblegummy effect and uh, basically kind of put me in a place of little girls running around playing and popping bubblegum. So yeah. I just wanted to rank it low. But I think the execution is nice and there's probably a ton of fans of it out there. And when I'm ranking against the entire collection, it's ranked very low here. Mm -hmm. For me, my number nine was Galleria, which as a man who enjoys his animalics, it was a little bit too animalic at that intro for me. And it's pretty animalic. It's so rough, guys. The, that opening is something that you have to get accustomed to. I don't know if you can get accustomed to it. <laughs> you have to wait for the climax. Yeah, exactly. You and have to wait for the climax. <laughs> you just got to wait it out. And as I smell it now, it's dried down a little bit on the strip. And I ranked it very low. It's dried down here. And it smells good on Sebastian. And since I ranked it low, it was because I only really had that opening. I came into the studio, I smelt it, and it's just kind of how I knew the fragrance. But it is a fragrance that you have to you have to give it time. And if you do give it time, it turns into something interesting because right now I'm getting a very interesting, leathery, slightly aromatic, but not overly... Definitely, it's a very interesting leather, and... Had I smelt the... It's very unique. The top I, notes are very unique. Had I smelt the dry down earlier, maybe I would have ranked it higher, but for what I got from it at the time of rank, making this list, I'm putting it at number nine. Okay. So my number eight is Derby. So Derby's at the bottom because Derby is not performing very well. I enjoy the galbanum in this fragrance. Really wanted to enjoy the fragrance it needed to be beefier and a lot more intense to last longer on me but it was fizzling away really fast mm -hmm. it did remind me of ex nihilo's viper green whereas viper green has a, a lot more intensity this one seemed just subdued yeah. and also the galbanum in, uh, in derby was similar to ex nihilo's viper green whereas if you compare it to something like chanel number no. 19 there's definitely differences these two had sweetness but the Chanel number no. 19 was a bit on the vegetal side. Mm -hmm. Even either, either way, though, it's a great fragrance. Just wish it was more beefier, and it yeah. wasn't. For me, my number eight was Cortile. And again, kind of going with what I was saying on La Prima, the white floral aspect isn't something that I'm drawn towards typically. I think it was executed and done very well by the perfumer. And if you do enjoy your white florals, I think it's... A lovely white floral bouquet. I mean, it has a little bit of a tropical vibe, as we were saying, from the Ylang Ylang. And the tuberose is there. It's very pretty. But in my opinion, just not something that I would reach for on a daily basis. Yeah, I could see this. A lot of men would find that fragrance very feminine. Mm -hmm. And I've put it here at number seven, which is, uh, I think it's a great fragrance. And that perfumer, and I, as I was saying earlier, she does a lot of great white floral fragrances. It's a big white floral bouquet of all of these beautiful white flowers. I think a woman can totally pull it off and wear that day in and day out. For me, I think the execution is great, but I enjoy some of the other fragrances a lot more. So either way, I think it's done nice. Uh, I'm just putting it at number seven. Yeah. My number seven is Naviglio, which at first when I smelt it, I wasn't the biggest fan, but it actually grew on me a little bit. As we were mentioning before with that fresh out of the shower, skin soap aquatic vibe it would be lovely in a warm climate as i mentioned however unfortunately the climate that me and sebastian are accustomed to in san francisco is a little bit more on the colder side and as far as a daily wear i think it would be lovely in one of those warm settings but here i don't think it would thrive as well and that's why i have it at number seven yeah yeah for me i've put number six diurno diurno is a great fougere it's ranked lower because I enjoy the other fragrances more, obviously. What I liked about this fougere is that 
they had a contrast with that almond liqueur. Typically, when you see the notes break down for a fougere fragrance, you'll have all the aromatics like lavender and geranium. Base notes, you'll either see tonka beans or coumarin. And I think what they've done with this one is substitute it with that almond liqueur. So it gave it a creamy vibe. It did create that almondy bitterness. And it was a beautiful contrast with the aromatics that I really enjoy in fougere fragrances. So it's a very original fougere if you guys are looking for a fougere that's different than others with that kind of almond liqueur like vibe mm -hmm. definitely check out Dior Nia. and I am agreeing with Sebastian on this one I have Dior Noir number six first ingredients of the day okay and um piggybacking off what Sebastian said I fully agree I think it's a it takes a normal fougere and turns it into something very unique with that boozy almondy amaretto aspect to it and I, I think it's really lovely it's a really good everyday wear yeah I yeah. think so and then at number five, I've gone with Piazza Affari. Yeah. So Piazza Affari, Diurno, Derby, I feel like they were kind of similar but distant. Mm -hmm. Out of the three, Piazza Affari performed the best on me. It was more intense, more beefier, whereas Derby was the, the weakest. And I like Piazza Affari. It feels like a kind of an everyday signature kind of a fragrance for folks. Uh, it's definitely a crowd pleaser. It's that kind of, a, I would call it their blue fragrance, even though yeah. their bottles all come in blue. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of that line. It's a very wearable fragrance. It smells great, very aromatic and things like that. So yeah. I thought since the execution was great and it had great performance, I'd put it at number five. And again, we are on a roll right now, but Piazza Afari was my number five as well. And as Sebastian said, Really good everyday wear, that molecular quality that we were talking about. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, that there is that Ibroxen something under there. It definitely does add a little bit to the fragrance. And in my opinion, I think it, it allows it to be even more mass appealing. And because Ibroxen, obviously, you've seen what Ibroxen has done with... Dior Sauvage, I don't like to mention it, but Dior well, Sauvage, that's, I mean. <laughs> that's the thing. I'm getting like a Dior Sauvage like dry down with this one. Mm -hmm. Also something like Elysium from Raja Parfums yeah. and a few other fragrances. So it reminds me of that, not up top, but when it's drying down, when I'm thinking of something Ambroxan like. Sure. Yeah. Really good fragrance. Yeah. Lovely for everyday wear. Great job uh, done with that one. And number four is Brera. Brera, I'm ranking it low because I feel like it's been done before. And even though Brera and Galleria, I feel like, are the two most intense fragrances from this collection, the reason I'm putting it at number four is because I've seen it done over and over again. It's mm -hmm. like whenever I see a collection of fragrances, there's one fragrance that smells like Brera. Rose and, uh, you know, a saffron. saffron. Mm -hmm. and sometimes with oud, this one doesn't have the oud, but it's kind of that very Middle Eastern vibe fragrance with loads of rose, two kinds of rose here. It's jammy, also really intense in-your-face rose, but powdery as well with yeah. the leatheriness of the saffron. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Just ranked kind of on the low side because been there, done that. Okay, that's fair. For me, my number four was Basilica, which I know Sebastian had at number 10, so we that's a little bit of a disagreement. But I have this one on my right hand right now. And as far as performance is concerned, it is performing very well. And as it dries down, I'm actually getting more of those warm lactonic notes that are mentioned in the fragrance. I, I wish I got those. I know. And Sebastian, for whatever reason, he's anosmic to them, which is, it's a shame because... No, generally, I'm not anosmic to milky lactonic notes. I just didn't get them because I think maybe... Yeah. All the other notes overpowered. Well, I possibly, but I don't know what it is. For me, I really enjoy Basilica. Okay, and <laughs> that's just again, it's a preference list. It's what you like as a person. Some and people like things more yeah, than others. Exactly, <laughs> and I think it has a that lovely resinousness to it. Resinousness to it, and uh, I like resinousness. Yeah, the resinousness <laughs> is nice in it, but uh, the lactonic vibe is coming out as it dries down for me, and it's not as dry and churchy as... Okay. Yeah. It was major church for me, like I was in swimming in church. <laughs> <laughs> Number three for me is Galleria. Yes, I've put it here because I really love that dry down. I can't get enough of it. The dry down is very addicting. It's the top that you have to be warned about. Mm -hmm. It's rough, mm -hmm. extremely rough, but... When I was testing these fragrances, this one was the most interesting that I kept smelling my hand in the dry down. I haven't done it with any of the other fragrances except for the first two, but number three, Galleria. Absolutely love the dry down. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. But just be warned, it's very animalic. Very, very animalic. And like I said earlier, when I ranked Galleria at number nine, I think 
it deserves a higher place now that I've smelt the dry down a little bit. So I I do agree with you on that one. However, my number three is going to be Derby. And yes, it does not perform well, but the scent is there. I personally think the scent profile on it is lovely. If you're a fan of anything Galbanum, let's say Untitled French Love or anything in those, in anything in that realm, you will find a liking towards this one. It is a very... It's not, I wouldn't say it's a very sweet galvanum, but it is a little bit sweeter. It's not overly bitter. Yeah, it's not overly bitter. And it's it's a really good scent profile if only they fortified it to make it last longer. I think I think it would be my Beef number. it up. I think it would be my number one. X-Trade, X-Trade, X-Trade. X-Trade of Derby, yes. <laughs> so my number two is Naviglio. I really love this one because of that whole shower soapy, you know, feeling when I'm wearing it. Because they feature aquatic notes in this one, and they've got a soap accord, the Marseille soap accord, plus they feature the the citrus flowers and the pentagram and things like that. It's like you're you're wearing soap that's been washed. Imagine just getting in the shower, lathering up all over, mm-hmm. water all over you. You smell the water, you smell the soap. That's what you get with uh, <laughs> Naviglio, and it's like a humid weather fragrance. Yeah. When you wear it in the humidity, you'll totally feel clean from it. You were really painting a picture with that one. That was great. Trying to. <laughs> For me, my number two is going to be Panettone. And it's a very, very unique fragrance. It's a lovely gourmand. It has citrus aspects, but it's not fresh, I wouldn't say. It's sweet. It's bready. It's cakey. It's it's lovely. It's a very nice, unique take on a very good dessert. And It's I, Panettone. It's Panettone, and they did it justice. It's a very lovely take on Panettone. She did a great job on it, and that's yes. why I put it at number one. It smells great. It's gourmand. It's bready. Mm-hmm. It's citrusy. It's nutty. It's a bit boozy. It yeah. really smells like Panettone, and it yeah. deserves a number one spot. Out of the, the two fragrances, Derby and uh, Galleria being so beefy, Panettone, on the other hand, is not as beefy, but I think it's just the right amount. I think mm-hmm. whatever she's done is perfect, and I think it's a perfect holiday fragrance as yeah. well. I forgot to mention that the rum accord definitely does come out in it. It does add a layer of booziness to it. Yeah. For me, my number one was Brera, and yes, it has been done before, but... It's a good fragrance. It's a very, very good fragrance. It's done very well. Um, the saffron and that jammy rose is very nice. Sometimes I get a little bit ooded out i guess you can say and i guess by them subtracting the oud in this because typically you would see oud yeah in it's kind of like an oudy fragrance yeah. without the oud yeah exactly you would see oud in a note breakdown in this in a lot of fragrances out there and i guess them subtracting that oud and kind of making it a little bit more tame and wearable uh for me i i love it and it performs very well it's loud like we were it's saying it's big yeah and it's a it's a great middle eastern scent yeah yeah cool we All did right. it we did it <laughs> Guys, what are your thoughts on uh, Milano Fragranza? Have you sampled these fragrances yet? Again, they're 100 milliliter bottles for 140, so they're actually even less expensive than Maison Margiela fragrances, which are over $160 now. And these yeah. are actually niche fragrances mm-hmm. from Italy. They're Eau de Parfum concentrations, and I've got a link in the info box to Max Aroma. You can go there and check these out if you're interested in checking them out. And I think definitely uh, if you agree with my taste, you'll sample number one. Yeah. Although he put uh, Panettone at number two. So we though. both really liked it, although we didn't have a Dolce Melodia in this video. <laughs> but still, uh, I think you should definitely check out uh, the fragrances over at Max Aroma and let us know what you think about them. Mm-hmm. But either way, thanks so much for tuning in and thanks, Joe, for coming by. We'll have to do a different themed video, too, to kind of get more um, familiar with you yeah, of sometime in the future. Yeah. But uh, we'll continue doing doing these house overview videos, house profile videos. These are a blast. Yeah. Where we kind of sample all the fragrances from a house. So mm-hmm. either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Adios.